Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on Oklahoma Gardening, I'm harvesting some sweet potatoes. Dr. Carl Whitcomb shares a new crepe myrtle. We take a closer look at creepy spiders. And Steve Upson shares his modular planter. The season's wrapping up, but it's time to harvest one last crop, and that's our sweet potatoes. We have been growing these all season. As we know, sweet potatoes are really a warm season crop, and they really thrive in that heat as they're actually native to Africa. So we've got our sweet potatoes. We planted ours in a raised bed here. Um, and generally, you want to harvest your sweet potatoes when the soil temperature begins to drop below 60 degrees. So being in a raised bed, we want to make sure that we're getting them out in time. Now, the first kind of step to do this is to go ahead and remove a lot of your vegetation. Um, and so we're just gonna cut that out of here. Um, make sure you don't cut your irrigation. Pull that aside. And you might leave a little just so you kind of know where the base of that plant is also. Um, so as to know where to dig when we go in there and dig. And what's nice is this is actually really good vegetation to put in your uh, compost or your keyhole garden. If you have had disease though, or any insect concern, you do wanna go ahead and dispose of that and not add it to your compost though. So now that we've got our vegetation pulled out, we're gonna go ahead and start digging. You wanna be careful when you're digging. Um, if you were doing this obviously in the ground, you might use a, a spade or a garden fork or something. And you don't want to bruise those roots too much. So be careful as you're digging around to sort of find those. It's kind of fun, it's like a little treasure hunt. Um, so you can see we've got a couple in here. And you might have started to see them kind of press themselves up out of the ground. That's another indicator that they're ready to be harvested. So we'll just shake some of that roots off. Look at all those sweet potatoes we've got there. And we'll get them cleaned up a little bit later, but we're gonna go ahead and harvest them like that. Of course, we have varying sizes in there. Um, and while usually, depending on the variety, the maturity will range, um, sweet potatoes start to form this tuber after about two weeks. And then at that point, they just start bulking up. So the longer they're out there, and again, depending on the variety, you might get longer ones or you might get fatter ones. So the nice thing, you can see our soil is slightly moist and you wanna make sure that if you're digging your potatoes, having a moist soil is a little bit better than having a dry soil as that pre prevents some of the scarring that might happen as you're digging those up out of the ground. So you can see we've got some of our potatoes here. We're gonna go ahead and clip off some of these fibrous roots. Um, we don't need those. We're gonna take these, and now they aren't ready to eat just yet. We're going to need to cure these, and to cure sweet potatoes, you wanna put them in a hot, humid environment. So temperature should be around 80 to 85 degrees, and the humidity should be about 85 to 90% humidity. So find a location and put them in there for about seven to 10 days, and that curing process will really allow those starches to turn into the sugars that we enjoy in our sweet potatoes.
Today we are back here again with Dr. Carl Whitcomb, who is a well-known plant breeder, especially when it comes to crepe myrtle. Dr. Whitcomb, thank you for having us back. We're excited to hear about some of your new releases of your crepe myrtles, especially. Okay. Well, see, this is a this is a crepe myrtle, mm -hmm. that, and they're typical upright growers with multiple branches and lots of flowers. Yeah. This is what you think of when you say that name. On the other hand. You what, got a new one, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> what do you do when you have one that grows normally until early summer, and then instead of producing flowers, it produces this complex of modified sepals. It never does flower. So, and, so the floral display is in its unique sepals that yes, it has. Yes. Wow. And they will continue. Um, they they go through a sequence. They will darken, and part of them will fall. And then the new one comes out, are more pinkish, kind of a pinkish tan. And then the whole plant gets covered on the top with this. But it never does actually flower. I think it's quite attractive as far as being different, uh, contrasting to other vegetation or what have you. But. Uh, and of course, you came up with a fun name for this different looking well, crepe myrtle, right? <laughs> <laughs> Since it is so different and does not flower when you expect it to, I named it Raunchy. <laughs> you know, well, what's Raunchy? Well, Raunchy is something out there, different. somewhere uh, yeah. different, yes. And so uh, it, it propagates easy, it grows like any other crepe myrtle, good foliage. The, the red-purple twigs add some color to mm -hmm. it as well. But, uh, so this is a, a new introduction. Yeah, it does have lovely foliage as well, and I like the contrast with that dark green and the the burgundy. Yes. Um, and so the sepals obviously are the uh, what would enclose the petals, right? That's the capsule. They and would. And so they've kind of just sort of mutated looking, it looks like. Well, they, they, they did. I'd, I'd had some, uh, an occasional mutant plant before, but they, they were ugly. <laughs> this, this thing develops in such a way, and this whole complex is such that I think it makes a fascinating plant. So do we know a little bit about the height and how big it gets at this point, or can you just yeah. speak to that? Well, it looks like uh, four to six feet. Okay. It's going to be a small shrub. and uh, But again, it's like the sterile crepe myrtle. They come out in the spring, grow vegetatively, but once they start to flower, growth is over until next year. Well, this does the same way. Mm -hmm. Once it, it'll grow, and then when it starts doing this, production of these highly modified <laughs> floral portions, sepals, it doesn't grow anymore. It just sits there and produces more and more and more of these, but no increase in height. So it's not going to grow much each year. If you want height growth, you fertilize it heavy in the spring to get when it to grow high. Pushing that vegetation. Because once it starts this, height growth is over. All right. Well, uh, um, and this is just one of many that you have released out on the market. What are we up to now? Is it about 10 or 12? I think it's, it's either 11 or 12. Yeah, and starting uh, off with your well-known dynamite, correct? Yes, yes. You know, I operate, I operate with two distinct mottos out here. They're both quotes of Thomas Edison. One says, we have no rules here. We're trying to accomplish something. We have no rules here. The other one, it says, I am not discouraged, for every wrong attempt discarded is another step forward. So if I have to throw this plant away, okay, I learned something from that, we'll still go forward. Well, and you found <laughs> at least 12 gems out there and all of that you're growing, so. And we're always looking for better, yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. Hi, this is Andrina Schufran from the Insect Adventure, part of the Extension Service of Oklahoma. And today, since we're coming up on Halloween, we're going to talk about spiders. And we'll look at the black widow and the brown recluse, but we want to focus on some of the other spiders that you might run into this time of year. Wanted to start off with 
the tarantula, since it's tarantula mating season. This is our little native tarantula. We just have the one species of tarantula here in Oklahoma. The males are moving around right now looking for females, and sometimes they do it in large groups, depending on how the weather is and everything. And so you'll see them moving around, and then the males will die over the winter. You might also see molts laying around. This is just the shed exoskeleton. All bugs live in a suit of armor, and a suit of armor won't stretch. It has to be replaced in the next biggest size, and so they leave behind their old exoskeleton and make a new bigger one. Most of their lives they're able to do that. So the one that people are calling and asking about the most right now are the green lynx spiders. Beautiful. You'll see them on plants and shrubs and flower bushes. They don't make a big orb, but right now you'll see them protecting a very large egg sac. And that egg sac will probably give 200 to 300 little spiderlings. Another type of spider that we're getting a lot of interested calls about are the orb weaver spiders. Make the big Charlotte's Web perfect circle to catch things like butterflies and grasshoppers out in the field. A lot of folks refer to the golden orb weaver as a banana spider. It is not a banana spider. Banana spiders only occur where bananas are grown. And that is definitely not Oklahoma. It's a golden orb weaver. But there are lots of other types of orb weavers too. There are cat face orb weavers and there are spiny orb weavers. It's a big family of spiders, but they all make that perfect circle web. The last spider I want to show you is a cellar spider. Now it looks like it has a fiddle on its back, just like the brown recluse, but cellar spiders are found up in the corners of dark places and they have a very highly decorated abdomen where a brown recluse has no decoration on its abdomen. And just to drive home, the brown recluse and the black widow, this is not a deadly animal. There she is on my finger. Brown recluses cannot physically bite you unless they are under pressure, which is why a lot of people get bitten in bed or people get bitten when they get their, pull their clothes on. Halloween is a wonderful time to focus on spiders. So go out in your backyard and make a scavenger hunt, find what you've got. back here in our backyard garden with another raised bed idea and joining us today is Steve Epson with the Noble Research Institute and Steve thank you for joining us again I know you've been here several sh times shown us several different models mm -hmm. of raised beds but you've got another concept to share with us tell us a little bit about this structure sure this is an old idea we've just kind of updated uh, stacking tires to make a planter we refer to this as our modular planter uh, each tire is, serves as a modular, or a module, excuse me, either a base module or a growing module. And we'll show you how to, how to put, the, put the system together in just a minute. So the nice thing about this is there's a lot of flexibility. Can you tell us a little bit about what are the pros to something like well, this? Well, this is the least expensive design that we've uh, fabricated, okay, come up with at the Noble Research Institute. It's, it's kind of um, uh, simple to build. Uh, least expensive and uh, uh, shortest time required to build this. And in, in terms of flexibility, uh, we can outfit it with all types of uh, covers, all types of trellises, because it's designed to accept and to be very versatile uh, in those covers and, and trellises. And I would imagine the different modules or mm -hmm. tires are what we were referring to when we say modules, right. can uh, change the height of yes. this also. Yeah, so if you, you want something that's a little bit higher mm -hmm. and so you don't have to bend over, so let's talk a little bit about what we've got on this one before we go into the construction. What, well, what are we looking at This here? is just a basic uh, cover. You refer to it as a mini tunnel or a small hoop house. Uh, but um, it basically can consist of some uh, 
uh, EMT, one half hitch EMT conduit and some poly pipe. And uh, believe it or not, a shower curtain, okay? <laughs> Uh, I stole low this cost. from our bathroom this morning. Oh right? no! <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, it's very low cost, but you can see it provides a little protection. Uh, these can be made uh, different sizes, elevations in terms of the cover. Uh, there's different uh, um, styles of covers besides this style that's uh, contained in our construction manual. You can read that more about. Yeah. And, the, and the important thing about this little low tunnel is not for you to grow a tomato all season long under this as a greenhouse just to get that early tomato, protect it from those late frosts that maybe are out yeah, there? It's protected ag. It's modified environment. It's yeah. not a controlled environment like a greenhouse. Right, okay. And of course, we just have it open right now, yeah. but this covers ventilation. up all the way. Yes, um, it covers you just up. got some binder clips on there. I mean, you can't get more straightforward it's, than it's that. It's very, very simple to, to build and to use. Okay. And we're trying to keep it that way. All right, well, let's go take a look at the construction sure. of one of these, if you don't mind. Sounds great. Okay, Casey, we uh, have a little demo set up uh -huh. here to kind of show you how this planter goes together. Uh, what we're looking at here is a base module and attached to this bottom base module are the support posts. Okay. And these serve two purposes. One is to hold the stack of tires together, make sure they don't slide off, and also serve as a point of attachment in the ends here for anything we want to construct, accessorize, you know, from, from on top of the bed, okay. like our, our cover. All right, so we've got that all screwed in. What's okay, the... so we've, we've uh, we had some options here. We can either have one base module or two. We want a tall planter, then we can add another intact tire to this, uh, the, the base, okay? okay. If uh, we don't, then we need to make a decision if we want to have a floor in this, or we want a floorless planter. Now, when I, what I mean by floor is a floor, <laughs> okay? So this is constructed of basically some goat panel uh -huh. and some heavyweight remesh, or okay. not remesh, landscape but uh, fabric. landscape fabric, right? Weed barrier, right? Okay, and so this will basically go down on top of that, and that will keep the, the, the uh, mixture up off the ground, okay, our growing the potting soil. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so basically when you're talking about these base modules, that's just adding height. That is not anything about root zone or right. anything like that. Okay. Right, right. The base is just to support the okay. whole thing. So okay, so one tire or two depending so on your height. We're going to make this one just one tire, All right. okay, a base module one tire. Now the other modules will, will be uh, cut, okay, we're going to cut out the, the uh, sidewalls. And so this is the first unit we'll put on and this is as you can see we've had one side completely cut out mm -hmm. and we have a partial you left side the lip wall. on the yeah, other one. and this lip will support uh, the the floor okay? okay now in order to support that floor we still have to have some type of, of structural members at the base so we have actually we're going to use because that hog paneling, I mean, there's going to be a lot of weight, so that hog paneling right. is not enough, so you've got... Right. We're, okay. we're going to have to have some two before, some okay. cross members to support that weight. Okay. Okay? So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll put two in the middle here, right. and that goes completely across, and then we'll go ahead and put our first growing module in. Okay. Okay? And you see how that kind of gets that up off... The other one, this is a little portal around the edge here. This acts as a ventilation. And then we'll also put some blocks in, and that'll help support okay. the, the growing module, right? And we go all the way around. And then we'll take our, our floor, place it inside here. And that will allow us to put our growing mix in, all right? Now, if you don't want to use the floor, save some money, it is acceptable to just fill the entire base with wood chips okay. uh, or some base bark mulch. So something, if you just had some utility mulch or something right. like that. And the reason we want to use that is so uh, save some money and also it'll serve as a screen so uh, we don't want our growing mix just all disappear through our little vent holes in the bottom here, okay? okay so, so we'll fill that all the way up to about halfway up this first growing module, okay? So we'd still put the wood 
the cross member maybe doesn't matter as much? The cross members, the two center ones can come out. Okay. But you still need the exterior one. To allow for drainage, air flow. Aeration, okay. uh-huh, yeah, okay. Because I would imagine these do get hot, right? I mean, they do get warm, yes, yes. And okay. so we want to vent them as much as possible. Some people will paint them white. You can also put some uh, luminized insulation uh, around the outside to reflect the sunlight. But, you know, we haven't had any big issues with this. As mm -hmm. long as you keep the soil moist, then the plant's growing abundantly where they have the size to shade the, the right. container, okay? Uh -huh. The west sun is the, the biggest problem. So we're ready okay. for our floor? Yep, we'll put this in. That's if we're gonna use the growing mix, right? And mm -hmm. have the floor. And then our last module goes right on top of that. <clears throat> As such. So and this got, one doesn't have the lip. You've cut it clean on right. both sides. So. so we have all this surface area free now so we can plant. Yeah, so this is a good volume of soil for those plants to grow in yeah. so you wouldn't have to be watering them quite as much. The shallower, obviously, you're going to have to water Yeah, more. you're going to have 14 inches of soil in here. Yeah. When you, even when you account uh, for your mulch material, if you don't have the floor, if you have the floor, then you can have even more. You mm -hmm. know, this, <laughs> we're looking at almost 20 inches there. Right. So, growing medium. And again, if you wanted to go higher, then you would add another base, base model, model, not you don't adding need, more soil. Right, that's overkill. Right, okay. It's too expensive. So what do we have here? A couple of different pipe options. We're going to make a trellis. Real quick, okay. show you how to do that. We're going to insert this. And this keeps it from rotating when we put our string on so that it doesn't spin in the column. And, and you have screws down below, but those aren't actually going into the tires. That's just to hold that as a floor. That just holds right? it up. Okay. Yeah, that's the base of the post. Okay. Uh huh. That takes care of that. Then we're going to so connect you, the two. You put your screws on the outside, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That way they don't interfere with anything. They we actually will lap the string around the post, so this helps uh, with that Hold process. It. Okay. Uh huh. You don't need to attach this. Just slip this. That's your spreader post. This makes one trellis frame now. And then what we'll do is we'll use. There's several ways you can do this. You can actually attach a piece of wire to this, some remesh. And I think I've got that around here somewhere. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Okay, this is one op option. Okay, if you're growing some cucurbit, some cucumbers, or some, uh, some uh, beans, peas, okay, some sh then you can attach it just to the frame this way, okay? okay. And you can use some tie downs, whatever you want to do, okay? That's one option. Of course, you could make this a little higher if you'd like, depending on what you're growing. Right. Okay? okay. Now, this is a, uh, a technique we use for our peppers and our tomatoes. Okay, so we will wrap, just, we've got a loop there, okay? Now, I'm gonna walk around this, and this is one way of doing this, it's quick. Okay. Okay, you can tie individual levels, but I kind of like to just do it this way. And what's the kind spacing you the, on your screws? About oh, five, six, six inches? inches. Okay. Yeah. You try to keep it tight. And you're doing two uh, lengths mm -hmm. each time. Right, so we're making a cage, okay. a skinny cage. Yeah, that's a quick way to make a trellis mm -hmm. there. That's it in a nutshell. Okay. As the tomatoes grow, you just work the terminal and the foliage through here. Okay. And and, that's pretty and for, much it. For this size can, uh, tire, obviously they might mm -hmm. vary in size of tires, but for this one, two tomatoes? Two tomatoes, okay. right. Yeah, it will, a tire size, a module this big, it's about 32 inches across. Yeah, we can grow two, two tomatoes in this. I've got another trellis option. Okay. Let's say for peppers. All right. Okay, so we're going to Smaller train plant, those up. you might Smaller be able to put plant. more in we're here. We're going to put four, four pepper plants in okay. this particular container. All right, so we're going to... Let's do these two, right across from each other. The same concept, right? We're gonna have spreaders for this set, this row and spreader for that one, and then we'll run the twine. Okay. And then we'll have two, two peppers plants evenly spaced then, between each row of, of twine. Okay, so basically you've got two rows yeah. of twine in there for yeah. the peppers. Yeah. So Steve, it looks like there's a lot of options for this with trellising for peppers, tomatoes, and then also the hoop house, the low tunnel as we saw earlier. So this is a great option. Now I know tires are tires, they're going to outlive us, but tell us a little bit about what we can do to maybe dress this up yeah, if we wanted to. It is ugly, no frills. I understand that. So we can either paint it you can paint it terracotta, you can paint it white to reflect the sun, you can paint it, let your kids paint rainbows on them, you know, or giraffes, whatever. Uh, even put some, uh, some wood uh, 
maybe some uh, like some old uh, stockade fence, you know, uh, yeah. panels or two buys, but. Yes, you can do something to dress it up. All if you right, want to. but otherwise, low cost, easy right. to make raised bed. Very versatile and cheap. Excellent. Relative thanks for cheap. thanks for sharing with us, okay. Steve. You bet. There are a lot of great horticulture activities this time of year. Be sure and consider some of these events in the weeks ahead. Next week on Oklahoma Gardening, I'll share the November Hort Tips. We show you some unexpected kids cleaning up the pastures. And Barb is back with a final recipe. To find out more information about show topics as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure to visit our website at oklahomagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussion on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. Tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater gem. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shops, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and Tulsa Garden Club. <laughs>